thank God for him. We thank him, thank our Lord that he can enable us to study his word. This morning, we are looking at the types and anti-types. In other words, we are looking at objects that were used to point or to, to, to mean something else, to point at something real or something else. Shadows pointing to the object, the real object in Bible. Now, we're going to concentrate much on that 2,300 days. Remember, our theme for this entire week is the open books. And we learned that the open books are three. There is a book of life where each and everyone is named that live and that will live until Jesus comes is written in the book of life. The second book is the book of remembrance. Every good act, every good deed, every repentant act that is done by an individual is recorded in the book of remembrance. And we have the book of iniquity, where every sin that has ever been committed by each and every individual is recorded. So what happened on the day of atonement or on the day of judgment, names are brought, names are called, as I always saw, when the judgment started, the ancient of days, the ancient of days did sit, and the judgment began. And the books were open, as we saw in Daniel chapter seven, verse nine and ten. So names are brought, and the books are open to examine. Examine are these names worthy? So the same. The 2,300 days, we see them in the book of Daniel, chapter 8, verse 14. And the Bible reads, On to 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. So when this scripture, or when this verse was studied by the Millerite movement, now here we are tracing the origin of Adventism, when it was examined by the Millerite movements, they realized or came to a conclusion that cleansing of the sanctuary after the 300, 2,300 days meant that Jesus was coming back to cleanse this earth with fire. The event was miscalculated, but the timing was right. So, these people started proclaiming the gospel in the times of 18, 1840s, 18, it was 1842, 43, actually. And they made a conclusion and calculated through history, bringing evidences here and there that Jesus was supposed to come on October 22nd, 1844. That was the conclusion of which they meant that the cleansing of the sanctuary would mean Jesus cleansing the earth, as we saw. It was a great disappointment for these people. Their master never came. And most of them left the faith. But let's stick to our study, types and anti-types. Let's read. As you can see, when the disappointment happened, these people went back and re-examined the scriptures. They thought, no, how can we have no? How can we have failed? How can the Bible be wrong? What happened? When the time passed at which the Lord is coming was expected in the spring of 1844, those who had looked in faith for his appearing were for a season involved in doubt and uncertain. While the world regarded them as having been utterly defeated and proved to have been cherishing a delusion, their source of consolation was still in the word of God. 
many continue to search scriptures, examining anew the evidences of their faith and carefully studying the prophecies to obtain further light. In other words, were there disappointments, were there doubts, you need to go back to the word and study the prophecies. Because without the vision, the people perish. So these people, when, when the Millerite movement saw, the, saw, saw, saw no light, I mean, saw, uh, saw, saw that their expectation of the Messiah had been failed, and their hopes were trying, were starting to string. Doubts were trying to cover up each and every mind of everyone. They had to go back to the scriptures. And I lacked the courage. And when they went back to the scriptures, light was given. You think and typologically, think typologically, could this be the same that would happen to the people of God in such a times? That when the hopes of your appearing does not happen, when the long-awaited Messiah does not come, where should the hope of God's people be? In the scriptures, studying the prophecies. And that is what we are doing. Studying the prophecies. Types and antitypes. Let's see the types in the sanctuary service. Arguments drawn from the Old Testament types also pointed to the altar as the time when the event represented by the cleansing of the sanctuary must take place. This was made very clear and attention was given to the manner in which types relating to the first advent of Christ had been fulfilled. We remember when the Israelites were crossing from Egypt, were moving from Egypt, to the land promised by God, they had to slay a lamb, which was the Passover. They had to slay a lamb as Moses directed before the journey. So even here, the slaying of the Passover lamb was a shadow of the death of Christ Jesus. This we can look at it in First Corinthians chapter five, verse seven. With the Israelites, we are moving from Egypt to the promised land. The first thing they had to do was to slay a lamb, the Passover lamb passing over. So that lamb that was slain was a shadow pointing to the death of, of Jesus Christ. The same example I can give in Genesis, when Adam had sinned and the Lord visited him, the time of his visitation, remember, well, that was the time of judgment that God came and visited him. Adam, where are you? I heard your voice in the garden, oh Lord, and I hid myself because I was naked. Who told you you were naked? Did you eat of the tree that I commanded you not to eat thereof? The woman you gave me, Lord, gave me the fruit to eat. So when God visited Adam, judgment was passed. Thus thou art and in dust thou shalt return. And for the serpent, God said, I will put an enmity between thee and the woman. And for the woman, God had to increase the her desire for her husband. And in sorrow, she would desire him and bear children. So the judgment was passed. But God told Adam to slay a lamb. For the first time, that one we saw in the, in the first series, that Adam's first time to slay a lamb was a whole fixing. He had never seen blood being poured. So when he slaughtered that lamb, he saw the plan of redemption revealed to him. And he saw that his sin would make the dear son of God to die. So that was another type as well, pointing to Jesus. So the slaying of the Passover lamb was a shadow of the death of Jesus Christ. First Corinthians 5, 7, this was sin. The thief, the thief, not thief. It is sheaf, S-H-E-A-F, the sheaf of the first fruits, which at the time of the Passover of the Passover was waved before the lamp was typical of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In other words, this was also another type which was pointing to the anti-type, the real, the real. This was a shadow now pointing to the real. The sheaf of the first fruits, 
which at the time of the Passover was waved before the Lord, was typical of the resurrection of Jesus. So this thief of the first fruits of the Passover as the type, it met the anti-type Jesus when he resurrected as the first typical resurrection unto the Lord. These types were fulfilled not only as to the event, but as to the time. On the 14th day of the first Jewish month, the first day and month on which the 15th long centuries, the Passover lamb had been slain, Christ having eaten the Passover with the disciples, instituted that feast, which was to commemorate his own death as the lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. John chapter 1, verse 29, uh, 29 as you read it, the Bible says, Behold the lamp of God that taketh away the sin of the world. So in other words, all these shadows, killing of the lamp, Passover lamp, were pointing straight to the death of Jesus. That same night, he was taken by wicked hands to be crucified and slain. And as the antitype of the wave of Shiv, or as the antitype sheaf of our Lord was raised from the dead on the third day, the first fruits of them that slept. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20. You see how types are meeting antitypes? Let all minds think typologically. In the Bible, there are a lot of typologies. Even in this dev atonement we are living in, look and study clearly the day of an atonement in the Israelites or in the Jewish time, what would happen on that day, on that typical day? But now today we are living in the anti-typical day <clears throat> where the other shadow that was given to the Israelites is now becoming real, the real anti-type in our day here. Study it, examine it, and know where we are standing prophetically. In like the manner, the types which we relate to the second advent must be fulfilled at the time pointed out in the symbolic service. Do you get that? In the, in the same manner, types, those objects, which could relate to the second advent as the people waited for the second advent, waiting for Christ in 1844, but he never came, must be fulfilled what kind of events are those being talked about? When you started that Millerite movement, that time of the 200, uh, the 2,300 days, that great disappointment, many people waited. And when the Messiah never appeared, they lost the faith. But there were those who were searching the scriptures honestly, giving themselves to the study of the prophecies daily. A lot could happen. A lot. Under the mosaic system, the cleansing of the sanctuary or the great day of atonement occurred on the 10th day of the Jewish month, Leviticus chapter 16, 29 to 24. It happened on the 10th day of the Jewish month. That was the day of atonement. And this is the day we are living in, which started in 1844. We are in the time where books are being opened. And it may be to a surprise that soon the high priest will be leaving the sanctuary. That soon the work of atonement is ending. Events moving on in the whole world are evident that indeed the work is being completed. With the increasing evils we are hearing, homosexuality now being the topic of the whole day in the whole world, it being legal in here and there. They're even now starting to say it should be compulsory even in our schools. Our children should learn all about these evils and imagine. All evidences around the world are becoming proof that the bells on the high priestess garment are being heard as he returned from the most holy place. Take heed, take heed on this day of atonement. Israel could weep 
could be praying, repenting of each and every cherished sin. They could afflict their souls in prayer and in repentance because the moment the high priest comes out and finds you with unrepented sins, you will die instantly. Think typologically about that. And typical here, when the high priest cometh in the clouds of heaven, remember the Bible says, those that have slept in Jesus will rise first to meet him in the clouds of heaven. And us who are alive shall also join them. But those that are living and are evil, at his appearance, they will die instantly. You get that? Be conscious of whatever you do. Every word, every action, every deed, every thought is recorded in the books. Is it an evil thought? Is it evil words we speak? Are these evil actions we do? How shall we stand in the presence of God without a mediator for sure? Think about it. The day of atonement we are living in. When I've been reading all this entire book, sometimes I feel so, so touched and pray, God, who will be saved for sure? But there's grace of the Lord. That indeed, if we do according to his will, then our names will remain in the book of life. In conclusion, carefully and solemnly, those who received the message came up to the time when they hoped to meet their Lord. Every morning they felt that it was their first duty to secure the evidence of their acceptance with God. You hear that? Every morning. It was the, their first duty to ensure or to secure the evidence of their acceptance with God. And that was in prayer. Their hearts were closely united and they prayed much with and for one another. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32, the Bible says, And be ye kind one unto another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. This is the type of love and life we ought to live in this development. As the types are meeting archetypes, as we see the types, studying the types, and now re seeing where we are, and typically, we ought to be always in prayer, pouring hearts out, repenting of cherished sins, living truly according to the word of God. How will it happen when we are, we are left out and the books are open? Who found wanting? Because soon the proclamation, let the just remain just, let the filthy remain filthy, let the whole remain, remain holy. It's God pronounced. And that is the time of the visitation. Actually, this time even won't be allowed had by everyone. No. The time of the close of the work of ministration in the most holy place will be so silent because he said in his word, take heed, watch and pray, lest I come to you as a thief. It will be a silent sin. Then what will proceed that event is the second coming now when he comes to the clouds of heaven. But the work will have already ceased in heaven. The time of intercession will have ended unknowingly if you're not watching and praying. If you're not studying, knowing where we stand, knowing or studying the types, the times of the Israelites, the sanctuary message on the day of atonement, what, what will take place? Then he will come unto you as a thief. You will not know the day of your visitation. You will not know the day when the probation will close. And to your shock, it will appear in the clouds of heaven when you don't know. But he has given us his word. May God help us indeed. By the time we come to the conclusion of this entire book, we may know what we ought to do in such a times we are living in. Thank you, Father, for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your kindness. Forgive us where I have wronged, O oh Lord. Carry our hearts in faith unto you, Father. 
as you're blotting out sins, books are open, names are being rejected and names are being accepted, Father. May each and everyone's name that is listening to this word, Father, remain in the book of life. Be merciful to us, O Lord. Cleanse us from all filthiness. Open our minds that we may behold wondrous things, O Father, out of your law. We desire you, O Father. Bless us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.